We could be a better team, but we may not win as many games. Head coach Fran Dumphy uttered those prophetic words in the preseason when comparing the 2010-11 Temple Owls to the 29-win team of a year ago. This year's squad would go on to win 26 games, but one would argue that win number 26, a throwing 66-64 victory over Penn State in the NCAA tournament, made this season a better one. And the way that this year's Temple team went about its journey was remarkable. Temple has been knocked out of the first round three consecutive years until today. The Owls lost two players in freshman Anthony Lee and senior Craig Williams in the preseason. Then, star point guard Juan Fernandez missed four games due to a bone bruise. Two-time All-Conference performer LaVoy Allen would sit out a key game at Dayton with a sprained ankle. As if that was not enough, disaster hit when in the span of a week, starting forwards, Michael Eric and Scooty Randall would be sidelined with injuries. Like the famed Energizer Bunny, the Owls, however, kept on ticking.
The season started off with tremendous hype as the Owls were ranked 22nd in both polls for the first time since 2001. The expectations were high, not only inside the team but from the people. From what we did last year, uh, everyone knew it was Lavoie's last season, so you know we were expected to be good for him, and, and you know because everybody was waiting for us to do something big. Coming into the year, uh, you knew where you were going to get out of Juan and Lavoie. Uh, you know, last year I was one of the guys that you know improved, you know, slightly, you know, but nobody knew I was going to, you know, had a year that I had. And Scooty, who you know, who's won almost every most improved, most improved player award. You have the best record possible, win the A10s, and if you can, just get into that NCAA tournament. I think we owe to everyone that one game that we won in the first round. So, you know, that was something good we could accomplish. Ramon Moore, who moved into the starting rotation after earning A-10 Six Man of the Year honors in 2010, led a balanced scoring attack as Temple defeated visiting Seton Hall in its opening. Balance would be a theme throughout the season, as for the first time in a decade, five players would end the season with double-figure scoring averages. Game two saw Michael Eric lead five double-figure scorers with 14 points and a lopsided win over Toledo. A trip to Disney is usually fun, but not for the Owls, as they drop two of three games at the Old Spice Classic. An extended second half scoring drought proved to be the team's downfall and a loss to California in the open. Temple rebounded with a solid 65-58 victory over Georgia. As Scooty Randall exploded for 18 points, while Khalif Wyatt showed signs of things to come with 10 points off the bench. The Owls would come back from a double-figure deficit in the final game, only to fall short in a loss to Texas A&M. Temple fell out of the top 25 with the two losses, but six straight wins would put the program back into the polls. First, Temple would spoil the grand opening of the McGurk Arena with a 65-53 win over Central Michigan. Then the Owls would post a huge 64-64 win over Maryland in the BP&T Classic. Ramon Moore led the way with 16 points. Lavoy Allen posted his second straight double-double. And Khalif Wyatt made a career-high four steals. Wyatt launching and landing three. His last resulting in a layup to help thwart a Maryland comeback. Next up was number nine, Georgetown. And for a third straight year, the Owls would knock off a top 10 team at the Leah Coors Center. In front of a near capacity crowd, Ramon Moore scored a career high 30 points. Terrific move by Moore. He has 21 points now. There it is, the dunk. Strong baseline drive. Got himself open for a huge three and a 30-point night. I think it was a combination of, you know, them being the top 10 team, national televised game. Um, you know, the game before we had just played Maryland, so we had a lot of confidence, you know, that we can play against a type team like Georgetown, and we beat those guys. So, you know, I think we came in with a lot of confidence. And, you know, fortunately, I had a great game. You know, we were able to pull out the win. Earlier, well, Jefferson added 10 and sealed the win with two free throws. And they storm the court. A milestone victory for Fran Dumphy as he recorded career win number 400. The longer you're in this game, you're going to achieve certain milestones, and that was just a milestone. And uh, if you said I was going to be around long enough to get six and seven and eight hundred wins, then I'll feel really good. But that's a long way off and that's a lot of years left. And uh, as you can see by my beard, I'm getting a little so. long in the tooth. You know, it was Coach Dumfries, you know, it was a chance for him to get his 400th win. And, you know, what better way than to be the top 10 team. So definitely, and, uh, you know, Ramon Moore came out hot that game and he was unstoppable. And, you know, when he, when he scores like that, you know, there's not many games that we'll lose. That's a great accomplishment. Anytime you know you can, you know, be a part of a team and, and a great, you know, coach history, and you know you can get him his 400th win. You know, we can look back on it and say, you know, I was a part of that team, and you know, I was one of the guys, you know, who contributed highly, you know, to that win. And it's just something, you know, that that will go down in history forever. You know, we're always gonna look back on it. 
Well, we've been fortunate enough to have the court stormed a number of times now with Tennessee, Villanova. Uh, I guess those are the only two other than Georgetown, but that's three times in our last number of years. Uh, I think it's terrific, but I also think what it says is we're playing some really good basketball teams. They're not going to storm the court for a team that's coming in here with, let's say, a losing record or way down in the standings or in the rankings. So I think that says a lot for Tennessee, Villanova, and Georgetown, how good a basketball program they have. The Owls dispatched three more Mac foes with wins over Akron and Northern Illinois at the Leah Coors Center and Ohio on the road. That would set up a showdown with 8th ranked Villanova at the Pavilion. LaVoy Allen and Juan Fernandez both topped 20 points for Temple, but so did Corey Stokes and Malik Waynes for Villanova. In the end, the Wildcats prevailed 78-74. Temple opened its A-10 schedule with a 70-51 win over Fordham at the Izod Center. Michael Urich contributed his first career double-double to lead the way. Urich's got the rebound, put back by Michael is good. A visit from St. Louis followed. Temple's Leocorus Center win streak looked in jeopardy as the Billikens led by nine in the second half. But Scooty Randall led a run to tie the game, and Aaron Brown sealed the win with two free throws. Back in the polls at number 19, Temple dismantled St. Bonaventure 83-55, with Ramon Moore topping the Owls with 19 points. Upstart Duquesne was next, and the Dukes were ready, jumping out to a 22-2 lead that Temple was never able to recover from in a 78-66 loss. Khalif Wyatt lit up Penn in the next game, scoring 27 points, the most by a Temple reserve in over a quarter century. He led the Owls to a victory. Lavoy Allen, who would end his career third on Temple's all-time block shots list, added 10 points and a career-high six rejection. Scooty Randall scored a career-high 28 points at Xavier, but the Musketeers proved to be too much in a battle of the A-10's premier program. Randall for three. He's got another 26 points in the game for Scooty Randall. The Owls hung with the Musketeers, who extended their home conference win streak to 35 games. But Xavier ran off seven straight points late in the second half to take a 75-69 lead and then made 11 straight free throws to hold off the Owls for the victory. The Temple players did not hang their heads, but used the Xavier loss to fuel them to an eight-game winning streak. Khalif Wyatt, starting in place of Fernandez, had a game-high 17 points to lead the Owls past Charlotte. Next, Scooty Randall tallied 17 to propel Temple to a 72-54 win over St. Joe's at the Palestra. With Fernandez back in the lineup, Wyatt still took charge with a team-high 18 points, lifting Temple to a 71-67 win at the South. The victory over the Explorers was number 100 at Temple for Fran Dumpy, while Lavoy Allen became the fifth Temple player to grab 1,000 rebounds. Temple then used the hot hand of Scooty Randall in an 80-67 win over Rhode Island. Randall drained a career-high six three-pointers scored 27 points. Ramon Moore had 22 to lead five double-figure scores in the Owls 77-66 win over Fordham. Without LaVoy Allen in its next game at Dayton, Ramon Moore would again come up big in a big game, scoring a game-high 26 as the Owls won 75-63 in one of the toughest venues in the league. Playing without Michael Eric, who suffered a fractured patella in practice, the Owls dismantled Richmond 73-53 in a rematch of last year's A-10 championship game. And DeLeo, he read it beautifully, heading to the cylinder against Anderson. The finger roll is good. It's a 12-point lead. Ramon Moore led the way with 24 points. Juan Fernandez added 20. Moore trying to find a little opening. He does for Fernandez. Good! The win proved costly as Scooty Randall injured his right foot in the game. LaVoy Allen became Temple's all-time leading rebounder in the team's 66-52 win over St. Joseph's, passing John Baum with rebound number 1,043. In true form, Allen pulled down one of his 41 career double-doubles in the game. Top-ranked Duke would end Temple's win streak 
All-American Kyle Singler scored a game high 28 in a 78-61 win at Cameron Indoor Stadium. LaVoy Allen had 17 points and 13 rebounds against the Blue Devils, while Relier Jefferson added 11 points. Allen continued his incredible eight-season play with game highs of 19 points and 16 rebounds to lead Temple to a win at George Washington. Allen scored 17 of his points after the team fell behind 22-10 to carry the Owls to victory. Wyatt leads it for Allen, and he finishes it and gets fouled. Temple won its 10th straight A-10 game, the first such streak since 99-2000, in spoiling UMass's senior day with a 73-67 overtime win. Here's a steal by Aaron Brown, and the freshman's going to have a breakaway slam dunk. Lavoy Allen grabbed a season-high 18 rebounds, and Juan Fernandez scored 13 of his team-high 19 points in the second half. Three-point basket, Juan Fernandez. T.J. DeLeo made a layup for the first of five straight overtime points for Temple as the Owls took charge in the extra frame. Lavoy Allen made his final game at the Leah Chorus Center a memorable one. The 6'9 forward scored a career-high 24 points and helped Temple tie the building record with its 22nd consecutive home win, defeating LaSalle 90-82. to Yeah. Yeah. Besides about this back in Chicago, mercy, mercy me, that mercy a lie go. That's me, the first year that I blow. How you say broke in Spanish, me no I blow. Me drown sorrow in that Diablo. Me found bravery in my bravado. DJs need to listen to the models. You ain't got no, you ain't got no Yeezy and Serato. No no Stupid, but what the hell do I know? I'm just a shot town with a nice flow. And my chick in that new Phoebe Philo. So much I woke up in Sleepy Hollow. Can we get much higher? <laughs> Sex is on fire, I'm the king of Leona Lewis, beyond the truest. Hey teacher, teacher, tell me how do you respond to students and refresh the page and restart the memory, we spark the soul and rebuild the energy, we stop the ignorance, we kill the enemy. Sorry for the night, g are still visit me. The plan was to drink it to the pain over, but what's worse, the pain or the hangover? Fresh air rolling down the window, too many Urkels on your team, that's why your wind's low. Don't make me pull the toys out, huh? Don't make me pull the toys and fire up the engines, huh? And then they make noise. Can we get much higher? Uh -huh. So high. Score. He's gonna be impossible to replace him. He was our foundation. And the would spare us. And the able to hang and hit on the right side and won't go back in Paris. Here's more now down at the other end. More pull up. Yeah. Oh
The Owls' quest for a fourth straight A-10 title started with LaSalle in the quarterfinals. In what was expected to be a tough challenge, Ramon Moore scored a game-high 23 points, and the boy Allen posted his sixth straight double-double, leading Temple to a resounding 96-76 win. Moore, pull up, got three. Khalif Wyatt added 20 points, Juan Fernandez chipped in with 19, and Aaron Brown set a new career high with 14 points in the round. The Owls' boardwalk empire came to an end in the semifinals as Richmond snapped Temple's 10-game A-10 tournament win streak with a 58-54 victory. Temple rallied from a 53-47 deficit, the largest margin in the contest, to take a 54-53 lead with five minutes to play. Justin Harper made a tip-in to give the Spiders the lead, and Kevin Anderson made two free throws to help seal the victory. Selection Sunday saw Temple awarded its first at-large bid to the NCAA tournament since 1999. The Owls were made the seventh seed in the West region. Their opponent, 10th seeded Penn State. I think one of Selection Sunday is one of the, the best moments in, in your college career. Uh, you get to, you know, see all the teams, you know, celebrating that their season and going into the NCAA tournament. How much it means to teams, you know, just to make it there and to be able to, you know, have a a, a, a party for you know our fans to celebrate you know going to the NCAA tournament and it, it's just something great you know something that you know we all can look back on in time and, and say you know we were a part of this. It was the first time in the last four years that we had a situation where we did not know whether or not we were going to be invited to the NCAA tournament so there was a tremendous amount of apprehension. Everybody who we thought knew something about the situation, how the NCAA was going to pick their teams, thought we were in pretty good shape. But I don't think you can ever count on that. You're always worried and apprehensive about that. I felt like the atmosphere and, and everyone felt a little more comfortable this year than, than years before. And you could even see it when our name was announced, nobody stood up. And I think it was only Dutch that, you know, it was all new for him. But, um, you know, that's a good sign. That's a good sign because you don't want to take anything for granted. but. Um, you definitely want to make, you know, being in the NCAA tournament something that happens every year. You know, in the NCAA tournament, you, you got to bring your A game every time. You lose, or go, you lose and, and you go home. Pennsylvania schools would have to travel 2,500 miles to play at the McHale Center in Tucson. The trip was well worth it. The game would go down as one of the most memorable of the tournament. There were eight ties and 20 lead changes in the tightly contested game. In the final six minutes, there were just three missed shots and two empty possessions. As each team kept counter punching and the lead kept alternating, it was becoming clear that the last team with the ball was going to win. After Penn State's 2,000 point score, Taylor Battle drained a 25 footer with 16 seconds to play to tie the game at 64. Frazier Fernandez comes up on him. Battle for the tie. Good! The Owls called a timeout. It was then that Khalif Wyatt urged Coach Dunphy to put the ball in Juan Fernandez's hands. And then when we went back to the huddle and sat with our guys, uh, Khalif was very adamant. And he said, you know what, Coach, we've got to give this ball to Juan. And because uh, I think he can make the play for us. And Fernandez delivered one shining moment for Temple, connecting on a leaning 12-footer, lifting the Owls to their first NCAA win since 2001. He's with five. Fernandez will pull up. Three seconds. He's got to shoot. He leans in. He shoots. He scores! He scores! With four tenths of a second left, Juan Fernandez has won the ball game for yeah. Temple. Juan Fernandez has anything being mobbed by his teammates. The Argentinian with the big bucket at buzzer time. And the Owls advance for the first time since 2001. Everybody asks me and, and people close to me still ask me, well, what were you thinking um, when that shot went off? And you know, the truth is that I try to go over it again and again. Um, you know, and think what I was thinking at that particular moment, and, and I can't remember it. You know, as soon as I saw that, that open space in my left, I, 
pivot, you know, and just try to get a shot up. Uh, and, you know, it really felt good uh, as soon as it left my hands. And, you know, then you can see uh, what happened after. That might have been the best moment in my career. It was a tremendous, tremendously satisfying moment in my college basketball coaching career. To go in the locker room at the end and see the smiles on all the coaches' faces and, and all my teammates, the managers, just, just everybody, you know, because we waited so long. Uh, of all those years, we, we've won a 10 tournament. Like I said previously, we, we got there, but we, we wasn't able to win. That last shot went in. Uh, I almost ran up to Juan and kissed him, but you know, there was still like 0.4 seconds left, so I had to wait until we got in the locker room. Plus, it was on TV, so I really, couldn't really do it out there. We felt like we could beat anybody after that game, and you know, we even showed it uh, the, the next game against San Diego State. You know, the game was, was ours. Fifth ranked and second seed San Diego State was up next, and the Owls were up for the challenge. The Aztecs looked like they were going to pull away at times, but Temple would keep the game within striking distance. Trailing by five with two minutes to play, Wyatt drained a three-pointer, and Allen followed with a basket to tie the game. For the tie! Two seconds, one, the runner, no good, we're going overtime. In the first overtime, Fernandez made a three to give the Owls the lead, which they would hold until Malcolm Thomas tied it at 61 on a three-point play. In the second overtime, the Aztecs finally pulled away to end the Owls' season. For the Miss Lavoie for next year, I, I'm not sure how it was going to be. It was kind of sad, actually. I cried at the, at the end of the game, San Diego State, because, you know, I knew it was his last game, and you know, I wanted to go further for him. You know, and even though we're only losing one player for next year, you know, it's going to be huge because it's him. And, you know, as coach and all my teammates could tell you that, you know, it's a lot of things that you can't see, really see in the stats or, or people that, you know, don't know much about basketball, don't appreciate, but he's always in the right spot. He meant so much to our program. I, I think it's not surprising that we had that run of success while Lavoy Allen was on our team. From a personal standpoint, I was lucky enough to coach him because I think he was flawless in so many different ways. Like I said, a lot of guys was, was someone that we could count on, you know, despite our injuries, I think we, we, we ended the year pretty well and it was something that, you know, like I said, was, was a good year for us. You know, I'm proud of my team. We did a good job all year. And it was just something we can look back on and just was a great season. It was a terrific season for us. Uh, I think we battled some injury issues with Juan in his certain segment of the season, missing his games. Uh, certainly Mike, Eric, and Scooty Randall missing their segments of the season. Uh, so I think as you take a step back, as much as the San Diego State stings uh, from that loss, the further you get away from that, the bigger the picture you can paint for your, for your program. And you say to yourself, you know what? We had a really good basketball season last year. We take our heads off to this entire basketball club for what they were able to do this season. Just a wonderful performance, winning 26 games. Kane is in the building. But what a season it was. A 26-8 record with the 26 wins, tying for seventh most in school history. Earning a spot of the national polls for eight weeks. And individually, there was all-conference honors for Lavoie Allen, Ramon Moore, Juan Fernandez, with Scooty Randall earning most improved player and Khalif Wyatt being named sixth man of the year. Allen was also named to the all-defensive team, while Fernandez earned a spot on the academic all-conference squad. The legacy of Lavoie Allen, who ended his career as the all-time leading rebounder. And more importantly, with 96 career wins, including one in the NCAA tournament. The emergence of Ramon Moore as the team's leading scorer. The perseverance of Juan Fernandez, who fought through injury. The breakthrough year by Scooty Randall. The inside presence of Michael Eric. The energy of Khalif Wyatt. The toughness of Verlier Jefferson. The steady play of T.J. DeLeo. The growth of Aaron Brown. The support of Craig Williams. The exuberance of Anthony Lee. And of course, the Parliament. Dutch Gately, Jimmy McDonald, and Jake Godino. 
who found a unique way to provide support all season long. And last but certainly not least, Coach Duffy's leadership as well as his milestone wins. All in all, a season to cherish.